you doing? Welcome. Wait until this thing comes online. Happy Sunday. I'm coming online here. Uh, I am happy about a Vikings victory. Uh, Minnesota Viking. I'm a you know football fan, so coming online. Excited about that. We had a new quarterback in town. Dobbs, our leading quarterback, our first string. Cousins got injured, so feeling very happy about that. And uh, I'm coming online to say what's happening, everybody. Uh, okay, so I want to have this discussion, this debate. Um, also, I, I have some some fun stuff I want to I want to tell you. Uh, but I want to have this discussion, this debate of whether or not you can play. Uh, you need to know solos. Sorry, <laughs> whether or not you need to know scales in order to solo. So that's that's the question for the day. Do you need to know scales in order to solo? Okay, so I'm gonna do this in a three part segment. Okay, I'm gonna go. Yes, yes, you need to know. No, you don't need to know. And then I'm gonna tell you my opinion. So I'm gonna go through like the pros and cons of of each side, right? And then I'm gonna give you my opinion at the end. So, uh, so here's the case where you don't need to know scales in order to solo. And you can let me know. See, so we got some people, some folks join and say what's happening in the chat. Uh, say, this is the like the the extreme case. So you don't need to know any scales in order to solo. This is the case where you are a genius, like uh, Bill Frizzell or like Borelli Legrand or Jimi Hendrix or someone like that, someone to that effect, where you have such a crazy good ear, Wes Montgomery, where you have such a crazy good ear that you're not drilling scales because you can hear it in your head and you're almost like God just planted all the information of music inside your brain and that's a wrap. Uh, so... That to me is the case of, okay, so you don't at all need to know scales. It's because you got all the genius right there. You were born with it, all right? So here's my analogy. I think of knowing scales and, and like soloing to going bowling. You Have you ever, have you guys ever gone bowling? Um, and you go bowling and you have no bumpers. Well, you know that like, boom, you, you throw a ball and it could go right in the gutter right away. Uh, for me, I think of scales as having bumpers, right? So there's bumpers on either side so that essentially like y you can never go too far, right? And you're always going to knock down some pins, right? You're always going to be able to solo just a little bit, whether you're never going to hit throw a gutter ball and just totally whiff it. So to me, so to me, <laughs> having uh, knowing scales is like, playing bowling with bumpers, right? So here, here's the case uh, where you do need to know scales in order to solo. And then I'm gonna let you know what my thoughts are at the end. We can have like a whole little chat and debate here. Um, I see some folks are saying what's up in the chat. I'm not ignoring you, I see you. I just wanna you know, kind of get through my little, my little thing here. Um, so the cases where you would need to know how to know scales in order to solo is essentially if you are like myself or you are, you know, a guitar player that is essentially not like a Jimi Hendrix, not like a Wes Montgomery, and you feel like you need to know some type of knowledge in order to feel like you're at home on the instrument, that is the key. So you're an intermediate guitar player, right? You're an advanced guitar player. You're a beginner guitar player. You know, anywhere along that line, right? Even professional guitar player, anywhere along that line, and you want to feel comfortable on the instrument, but you don't, uh, you don't feel like, oh, you picked up the instrument for the first time, right? And you're like, I know exactly what to do. Someone like Wes Montgomery or Jimi Hendrix, right? They're not practicing your Lydian sharp five scales, right? They're, they're, they're just not. They're just not, and that's because they know what to do. So this is the case for everybody else, all the other plebs on the world, you know? like, And that's the case. And so that's the case for when you do need to know scales in order to solo. And for me, the answer to this debate for me would be absolutely, like my opinion on the matter is absolutely, you can like, you can definitely get by just knowing some licks here and there. But again, going back to our bumper uh, and bowling analogy, I feel like, okay, if I'm gonna go take a solo and I know what scale it's in, like I got my bumpers up, right? So I'm never gonna go completely gutter ball it. I'm never gonna whiff the solo. I'm always gonna be right in the lane, right? I might, you, you might knock over a couple pins, you might get a strike, 
but you're always going to knock over something, right? It's never going to be the case that you're just going to completely whiff it, which would be the case if you don't know what scale you're in, right? And you have no idea, right? You're going to you're going to gutter ball more times <laughs> than you would like, okay? So that's my take on the subject. I see this uh, come up with my students. I see this come up with, you know, on forums online and people have their whole debate. And this is my take, my humble take on it being a professional musician, professional guitar player. Um, and yeah, um, and if you, you are just joining me, welcome. This is Soulful Guitar Lessons. I'm actually posted up at home. I could share with you guys some little information. My wife is pregnant. We are expecting to go to the hospital at any second, which is crazy. I don't know when the when we're gonna have a kid. So I'm just on ambulance duty, right? You know, I'm just posted up here, ready to roll, which is completely wild, completely crazy. Um, but yeah, I'm just watching football, getting ready for this kid. So it's, it's completely wild. Uh, very, very excited. So I uh, wanted to come on here, share some good news, share some good news. Um, very, very crazy. So uh, I saw some folks said some stuff in the chat. I'm gonna just take a take a peek. Uh, we got some folks from Alabama and Mike Turner. What's happening, gentlemen? How's it going? Okay, so let's uh, let's go over some examples. All right, so if I was in like if I was in the key of A minor, right, and I didn't know what if I was in the key of A minor and I didn't know where to go, you know, it, like, and you were just, you know, trying to solo and you're like, all right, where, where do I go? If you had no idea what scale you're in, if you didn't know it was, if you didn't know it was in there, you could be playing some crazy stuff like, like the worst sounding thing in the world, right? Like if you played E flat minor, that'd be, really out and terrible uh so to me knowing where your guardrails are like ah, i got my bumpers up right here that to me is clutch you know and i kind of think of these like as i'm going across the neck as my bumpers like oh i gotta i gotta stay within my little bumpers and i could kind of ping pong you know get my fingers ping ponging in between or ping ponging in between these two notes right uh and and we're gonna be good, uh, but if if I don't know that if I don't know when I'm in between these two bumpers, we, we got a big problem. The listeners got a big problem too because uh, it's gonna sound pretty bad. Um, so uh, oh man. playing for you right now. Wow. Got my heritage guitar right here. Kevin, thank you so much. some fun little fun little licks uh, in the key of D major you know what's crazy I'm gonna put on a little overdrive here using I'm using the Kemper using the Kemper by the way uh, let's go over some fun licks here so what's crazy um, about like the difference between major and minor I know we're we're going beyond the topic that at hand, right? Um, what's really, really crazy is that I can play, like in the key of D major, 
I can play the pentatonic scale here based on the the seventh fret, and I can also play it up here based on the tenth fret. And that kind of goes, this is like my major, and this is my minor. Major, minor. So like the seventh seventh fret is major, tenth fret is minor. So what does that sound like? It sounds like this. And then tenth fret, same ideas. Seventh fret, tenth fret. So like say um, I'm gonna tilt this down just really quick but like say I want to go play a riff in the key of D major and then I want to go up here to D minor and I do the same thing it's like such a cool little nugget and you, you know you could you go up here and you could just play the same ideas you know right here and then you could play the same idea just down three frets and it's just made like major minor major but like in the blues world you can do both which is you know like on paper that doesn't make much sense right why what could you do both uh, and then you just hear it one time and it sounds great you know this is both okay that's great minor third major third it sounds so good right right you could do both you could play I love that sound, right? Playing, like flirting in between major and minor. Uh, and you can do that for anything, like rock, funk, soul, gospel. Especially if you're like struggling as an intermediate guitar player to make the connections between uh, your fingers and your hands and understanding going up and down the fretboard. Just know that you can flirt between major and minor all, you know, all at once. So this is, you know, seventh fret. And you go up here and you're on the 10th fret. So nice. You know? You know, you can do crazy fun stuff. You just like, you start here, right? And then come back down. I don't know what's going on with my computer. It's all of a sudden making weird noise. You can start flirting, you know, just I I just do something like this, you know, so that's like a really simple and you can come up here. Oh. Oh. Something broke behind me. That's all right. Uh <laughs> just flirt with that idea and then you can just transfer it um uh, up and down the neck right you could do the same thing uh you could come up here you know and you just you have fun i don't know what is going on over here ladies and gentlemen uh let's see what's happening so, you can tell this is a live programming, you know, because uh, got something break in the background. Um, but yeah, you can you can you can have fun, like an experiment with it. Like on the top two strings, you could do something like this, and then you could go up here. And then, so you're playing something, then you go up three frets, and you play the same thing. And you could keep going too. Like I'm not gonna, you know, blow your mind, I guess, too much. But you could you could keep it going all the way up the guitar neck and down the guitar neck. You know, like major, minor, major, minor, major, minor. And somebody, Mike Turner, just said John Mayer does this. Absolutely, John Mayer does this all the time. He'll do it all the time. Uh, most of his solos will start off major. They'll start off pretty, you know, something like. And then 
he'll say something like, you know, he'll do a pentatonic run, you know, like a... And then all of a sudden we're in like minor, minor world, right? But it'll start off usually pretty and end bluesy. You know? Something like that, you know, like super bluesy. Um, and you can have fun with this too. You can do this as well. Uh, I see we got some folks joining us. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. I was just watching the Vikings absolutely have some fun with the Falcons. That was, a, that was a great game. Dobbs is our new quarterback. Cousins is out with a really bad injury, our starting quarterback. So, um, which is kind of, it's terrible, but also, you know, like, I feel like, you know, maybe Cousins wasn't the quarterback for us. You know, maybe he was, I, don't, I just don't feel like he was a winning quarterback. quarterback. Um, if you're just joining me, I'm going to do a little chair, chair swap. Uh, welcome. This is a soulful guitar lessons. I'm so glad you are a part of this community. If you're still watching and you've been watching for 15 minutes, give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. We are going over so many topics every week, uh, getting you better at this instrument. So many people, I think especially after COVID and during COVID, uh, they're like, okay, we're sitting in the house. We have nothing to do. What are we going to do? Okay, so some people picked up reading or art, and a lot of people picked up an instrument, picked up guitar, and a lot of people are still trying to figure that out and still trying to figure out, okay, what does that mean? How do I get better? Um, what's the right practice routine? What are like little tips and tricks to get better at this instrument, right? And... You know, there is, there are definitely secrets, there's shortcuts, there's ways to do it. Um, I've been playing for 20 plus years, so my experience is one that's like, I feel like I've gone down every wrong path, you know? Like if, if, <laughs> if I could have started over and like gone, just taken a linear path straight to the destination, right? I, it, it would have taken me, you know, 10, 12 years, but... The, you know, the problem when, when you, there was no internet and you're kind of discovering it all yourself, I go down one path and I go, oh, like, mess that up. Or go down the other path, oh, mess that up. And you, you kind of figure it out. And you also kind of get a vibe for who uh, who you like to learn from and who you don't like to learn from, right? Um, so I'm glad you're here with me, learning from me, and uh, enjoying yourself, hopefully, on a Sunday. Uh, where I'm at in Los Angeles, it's very, very sunny, so it's gorgeous, and I am not complaining. I'm not trying to rub it in. It's just a nice, nice time. Um, uh, so, anyways, uh, Mike said, can you g give a tip on how you can easily switch between the five blue scales I taught a little bit ago? Um, let me see what that means. Uh, but switch between the five blue scales you taught a couple weeks ago. Um, so I am not really sure what that means, the five blue scales. Um, if I'm interpreting this correctly, it's a huge part of my system, my method, to know all five positions of major scales, pentatonic scales, and I don't have time to go over every little detail today, but here's something that you should know, like a big picture. Uh, so say you're in the key of A minor pentatonic. I think this is what you're talking about, Mike. Um, um, sorry, Mike, I'm trying to see what you're saying and my chat's all messed up right now, uh, unfortunately. It's just glitching out. Um, but anyways, uh, so basically if you're in the key of A minor, you could play this box, right? You could play this. <laughs> But here's the thing, you wanna be able to play scales up and down the neck. So what, what I teach, a big part of my method, um, and I'm actually, you could check out my free masterclass in the description, um, and there's gonna be links to 
basically everything I'm going to show you right now, but just, you know, tabbed out and more in detail. But basically what I teach everyone is that you want to be able to go from here to here and back down. So you want to cover all this ground, right? You want to be able to go like this. New position. New position. New position. New position. And then back up here. Then you go back down. Right, and you want to be able to go from here to here and back and like all in one fluid motion, right? So that's one thing I teach. Same with the major scales, the same thing could be said, right? You, you could do the exact same thing all the way up and down for, you know, a G major. And then you, you want to transfer up, you know? Right? Yeah. And then you're going to what, right? You're going to work your way down from here all the way up here, blah, 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 back down. You know, I'd have to play that for you, but um, that's a big part of my teaching. I think this is super funny when I do this little chair thing. Um, so that's a big part of my teaching is just understanding uh, not just scales in like one position, but going up and down the neck. Some people call that like being in each little cage. Um, I've never thought of anything so... Uh, I've First of all, I never heard about the cage system until I um, searched online or like it came up online to me. Uh, so I had existed for like 17 years before I had heard of the cage system, right? And so that means I was able to play guitar without ever knowing what the cage system was. So... I'm not saying that the cage system isn't a great and awesome teaching technique and a way to understand the guitar. I'm just saying that I had never heard of it and I was still able to play the guitar. And it's not a huge thing I teach my students. Um, the cage system is helpful in the sense that, okay, like I can, you can be like here and you understand, then you go here and you understand, then you go here and understand. Um, a lot of my teaching is more fluid. It's not like, okay, we're gonna get this shape down and then we're gonna go to this shape and then we're gonna go, like, I, I want you to just kind of flow, you know, across the neck rather than just be like, okay, I got like frets one through three down. Then I got frets, you know, three through six down. I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think like that and I don't always teach like that. So um, all of that to say is you should, this is kind of like a long way of answering Mike's Mike Turner's question is you should understand uh, what to do here and all the way up and back and forth. Uh, I have great practice routines that are online that are free. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, I have a free master class. It's in the description. You can check that out. It's completely free. Um, teaches you about soulful guitar playing and also um, will put you on some waiting list for some of this great information that I'm just given away right now for free, but it'll go more in depth with tabs and a PDF and all that fun stuff, right? Um, but, you know, we're, we're here right now. Um, I got my trusty, this is a, a lot of people think this is a Les Paul, and it's funny, I grew up loving Les Pauls. I used to watch Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Allman as well as Warren Haynes from the Allman Brothers. He had a guitar just like, look at that thing. Ooh. He had a guitar, he had a guitar just like this, right? And it was a burst. Less, but, you know, this is a, this is a heritage. Um, and I wanted one forever. And then Heritage reached out. And they were kind enough to hook me up with this. And so the deal with this guitar versus a Les Paul is that uh, Gibson was part of a shop in Kalam Kalamazoo, Michigan. And in Kalamazoo, Michigan... Uh, they would make all their guitars, had all their factory there, yada, yada. Uh, and then in 1985, Gibson wanted to leave and wanted to just, you know, produce more, more instruments than the factory could allow. So they left. And the folks at the factory uh, that worked there purchased the factory from Gibson and subsequently purchased all the gear from them, right? They purchased all the molds and all the... Um, the devices that they could make the guitars from. And so since 1985, this company, Heritage, has been around. It's it's like it uses all of Gibson's uh, factory. It, um, to, yeah, on, uh, what am I saying? Uh, it uses all of Gibson's old, um, 
molding and casing to create these guitars. However, they're not officially Gibson, right? Because how could they be? They're, you know, they don't have the name. Uh, it's just a, you know, a different iteration. And, and um, they're still making it in Kalamazoo, Michigan. They're still making these Les Pauls or these Les Paul models, right? This is called a custom core. Uh, I think it's just so gorgeous. Uh, that, and honestly, I haven't cleaned this guitar in like, Lord, I haven't cleaned this guitar since like March. It's bad. It's really bad. You could see on the back. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see right here. This is like all the gunk from my hand. Um, but, you know, I and I never buy guitars that are aged. I always buy guitars that are, um, I like to relic them myself. You know, I never want something worn because I, when I buy an instrument, that means I'm buying it for life. Like I'm going to purchase it for the next forever you know like i have i have a white strap back there that i've had since i was lord 13 20 21 years so the thing is beat up there's been instances where i actually like wanted to like i was playing with my brother and i thought it was super cool when i was a teenager to go bam with the cymbal you know i was rocking out like, bam and it's a huge chunk taken out of my strat and you know it's like you live and learn that's how i relic my own instruments i wish i wouldn't have done that um but you know you do that you drop it a couple times and there you go you have a relic instrument my friends so all right i'm gonna come on and give you some more little tips and tricks um <laughs> sound if in, in case anyone's wondering i'm using a kemper um and it's just a bunch of profiles right now it's a a profile of an ac30 a vox ac30 which i think is a super beautiful instrument vox is like uh think like the beatles you know like changly i don't know how, if that's even a word but chimey um and yeah it has a nice like saturation to it something that the the fenders don't necessarily have unless you crank them up, you know, you dime them. sampled it cashmere that's a fun one if you guys haven't checked out any rock records I know we cover a lot of soul and funk and R&B um, but really really there is so much great guitar playing in you know, like Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin I've been getting back into him I used to I used to have his DVD and I would sit and watch him uh, I think it was How the West Was Won. I believe that was the DVD when I was, I don't know, 13. I see him and John Bonham and all the Led Zeppelin guys just like wailing. And one thing I took from that was that, okay, like these guys aren't the most accurate as far as like, uh, you know, they're not performing everything with precision, but it that doesn't matter because their energy was so out of control where they're just like running around the stage and like getting everybody so pumped that that didn't really matter so there is something to be said for like having your energy on point and having your uh um and not worrying 100 percent about whether or not you're gonna kill every single note but rather like if the energy and the vibe is there and you're playing with intention and heart and i i see that a lot with a lot of musicians like Jimi hendrix or you know cats from the who like these rockers these old 60s like classic rocks dudes like they will just go hard on their instruments and it's not like they're hitting every note but the the vibe and the intent is so on point that it's like it just doesn't even matter you know it's like it just sounds incredible 
anyways, like I learned a lot from watching Led Zeppelin, watching these old rockers just do their thing, Jimi Hendrix. Um, so if you haven't checked out some of those old records, like I would start with Led Zeppelin 1, uh, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, if you haven't checked that out, or The Wall, there are some absolutely crazy solos, uh, guitar solos in those as well. Super melodic. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, if you haven't checked out, um, his second record, Axis, uh, Bold as Love, um, you gotta check that out, because that, so that was like his sophomore album, and yeah, Jimmy is a unique, unique cat, and he, that dude played like nobody else, right? He was, Jimmy is a, uh, we'll have to go into detail some other time, but Jimmy has, uh, you know, like, <laughs> the dude worked for it, okay? Like, he, he was incredible, right? Don't get me wrong, but, you know, reading his autobiography, he, he had to really, really work for it, you know? He was touring all around and getting fired and getting ripped off and you know he yeah like it, it didn't come easy right for him and so um and then anyways all that's all that to say his second record is to me his crowning achievement and incredible and the songs on it are incredible bold as love right john mayer covered that um the guitar playing is wild and the songwriting is wild too um, so check that out. Um, some other old classic rock records that I would check out is, uh, so we did Led Zeppelin, we did Pink Floyd, uh, we did Jimmy. Um, if you haven't checked out Yes, Yes is a progressive rock group. And for some reason, I, I don't know, I always, so I loved, I had their CD, right? There's a CD called Fragile and I would use, I used to go snowboarding to it when I was in like eighth grade. and. Like, this is, I had a CD. Remember, you, oh, I'm dating myself, but you know the Sony G-Shock, right? It was like 60 seconds of shock protection. Like, I had my G-Shock, and I'd just rip it down these little hills in the Midwest, right? And um, I had Yes in there, Fragile. So check out that album, and Like, I know the album. I could sing every line from that thing. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, and like Steve Howe is a monster guitar player. You never heard anyone play like him. He's incredible. Uh, check that record out. And uh, there's one other band, Almond Brothers. Almond Brothers are an incredible, like Dwayne Almond, that dude accomplished more in his 24 years on this earth than I could in 10 lifetimes. He was an accomplished, like he put slide guitar in like a different stratosphere, right? He, there's a lot of cats doing it before, right? Elmore James and the like and Muddy Waters. Uh, but he kind of did his own thing with it, right? And he was a young guy, kind of turned up the volume on things, as well as just, like, being a crazy session cat for a bunch of other musicians, right? Like, uh, Aretha Franklin. You know, he, he'd be playing on all these other people's records. That is, like, you know, for for a young guy to do all that, and, you know, he, I think he passed when he was 24. That's, that's remarkable, right? So, anyways, if you haven't checked out Dwayne Allman, uh, and there was another guitar player in the group, but... Uh, Dickie Betts, you got to check those two cats out, um, especially Live at the Fillmore. Live at the Fillmore is, you know, they just, they go for blood. They go for blood in these records. Um, and this is a lot of music that I grew up listening to. I grew up loving. I grew up uh, just idolizing. And so I just want to pass this information on to you. No cost whatsoever, right? Um, these are just five records that I would recommend you checking out. And I think it's almost time to watch some football. You know what? What time? We got we got we we got another game on. So I'm gonna go get going here. I hope you are doing well. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this community here at Soulful Guitar Lessons. It's it's really awesome to watch everyone come here. You know, and we're we're growing. We're growing slowly but surely, but day by day. You know, it's thanks to folks like you just coming on, checking it out you know, grabbing little bits and pieces of information and incorporating it in your playing, right? So that's what we're all about here. And yeah, I just thank you. Thank you for being a part of this community. Tell your friends, you know, tell your neighbors, whatever. And uh, yeah, I will see you, see you all very, very soon. Uh, thank you. My name is Alec. I haven't introduced myself. If this is the first time you're watching, my name is Alec. And uh, yeah, I live out here in Los Angeles, California. So I hope you got something from today. I know you did because 
because I gave out a ton of free nuggets. And uh, yeah, I will see you, see you very soon. Give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. All right, take care.